I'm Austin Ivan. As a coach, many of their players look to them as a mother or father figure. And since today is Mother's Day, we thought we would celebrate some of the coaches across Texas who are mothers. But before we get into those stories, we kick things off with the junior from Lake Travis, Jacob Henry. Henry made waves across social media when he posted a video that went viral of him lifting 600 pounds. Jacob is no stranger to the spotlight, though, growing up around his dad, Mark Henry, who's also known as the world's strongest man. Jacob has always looked up to his dad, but is now powering his own legacy. It was a tough win, good opponent on the semis. I always loved professional wrestling because that's something I just kind of grew up in. Uh, I started watching in 2011, 2010, and from that point on, I was like, I want to be a professional wrestler. And um, I was like, man, that's something I should talk to my dad about. And I told my dad, I was like, hey, I'm kind of interested in wrestling. He's like, if you're going to do it, you're going to put 100% into it. And I was like, yes, sir, let's do it. Mo most of the advice uh, that I, I give Jacob is more thinking things like how to go forward after what just happened. When you got more to do, you can't celebrate. You gotta keep all of that bottled in until it's over. I wanna be a lot more mentally sharp than I was last year, because I feel like if I'm a little bit more mentally sharp, that'll put me in a better position to place or even one stage. And then it's like, okay, I'm gonna tell you the wrong, I'm gonna tell you what you did wrong first, and then I'll hug your neck and tell you how proud I am and how good you did. Athletically, he is outstanding. He weighs 285 pounds and he he moves like a lightweight. The sky's the limit. Uh, the anticipation right before they walk out on the platform. Oh man, I almost needed oxygen a couple of times. I think I, I have more butterflies in my stomach than he does. Coming from a place like I did where I knew nothing about pro wrestling except for being a fan. Jacob is a fan, but Jacob knows an awful lot. He knows a lot more than a lot of the wrestlers that uh, have been in the business for one or two or three years. When he goes into wrestling, he'll be more, he'll be like a Randy Orton, The Rock, you know, guys that uh, they understand wrestling, they just gotta go in and pay their dues. Like he, you know, be able to have those conversations and her interactions with Hall of Fame caliber wrestlers uh, is a special thing and, and, and shouldn't be understated. And I remind them all the time, like that don't happen. So do something with it. Don't, don't just uh, take it for granted. It's funny because my mom, she for years, she's always been like, Jacob, you should do powerlifting. Like, you, you would probably have a chance to win state. And I always say no. I always said no because I was like, I'm not trying to follow my dad's footsteps right here. Like, if I don't do good, I'm going to be like the failure. And then my trainer goes, Jacob, I'm looking at your numbers right now. If you cut five pounds and go to the 272 division, you'll probably win state. And I said, really? And he was like, Jacob, I can get you this, this, and this in two months. Just train with me. I'm glad that he finally embodying the fact that I'm not gonna be in my dad's shadow if uh, if I live. It was crazy, because I think the exposure was kind of, I didn't expect that. But I squatted 530 for two reps the week before. And then I, in my mind, I was like, you know what, I think I could hit 600 to end the summer. And I have to give credit to Raw Power. They got me stronger, it helped my bench and my squat. Very proud because I see the work every day for it to finally produce the level of attention and shock factor, it's the, it's the reward, but it's not over. It's kind of like the last ride, the last chapter. And it's just in one book, because I know there's more books for me to finish and for me to write my story. So I have to come in focused and prepared. And I'm confident that with all of that, I'll be okay. Oh, he was a much better football player than I was technically. I, I was bigger and stronger than him. Uh, but you know, when you're bigger and stronger, you get tired. I watch him at the end of game, just, he's just, you know, warming up. He just looked like he's, he could go another quarter or two. I hate to say it like this, but I feel like some coaches, they don't want to look at me because of my size, because I'm not 6'5". I'm um, six foot one, but 
Aaron Donald was six foot one, and he's a Super Bowl MVP, Super Bowl champion, one of the best football players of all time. Well, I let my play do the talking. I feel like sometimes I deserve the validation, and I'm not getting it. But I feel like it's starting to come a little bit. I just got to take my time. I see your face in every like ever since I was a kid, I would sing because you know you sing in the car or you sing in the shower. But then I started like singing in public, and people were like, "Wow, you have a really good voice." And my mom and my dad were like, "Wow, he actually does have a pretty good voice." So my mom in middle school, she's like, "You're taking choir," and I was like, "Okay." And I got in the choir, and I ended up loving it. And then my mom was like, "There's a band. They were looking for singers." She's like, "Are you interested?" I said, "You know, let's go to a practice." And I got to meet all the people. Then I started taking gigs and traveling up and down the road singing too. You know what's really funny? The more I think about it, I think their parents are more impressed with me than they are. Because I would like to think I'm a little bit more mature than a lot of guys my age. So um, when parents see me perform, they're like, oh my gosh, you're so talented. And they say that in front of their kids. And then I look at their kids and I'm like, yeah. Now you kind of wish you weren't picking on me a little bit. You know, I feel like building thicker skin for me was just part of it. Because like when you're a musician, everybody wants to say you're weak or you're uh, soft. Sports is just one of the things. Sports is the conduit to get to where he wants to be. Dwayne was the same. He always had visions of being greater than wrestling. I was just trying to like, you know, be multi-talented. You know, I'm trying to figure everything out so that 10 years down the line, football doesn't work. I can, who knows, I could be in Hollywood. I could be, singing in a band again, or you never know. Me and my dad both put a lot of pressure on ourselves because we want to be the best. I feel like we put more pressure on ourselves than any coach could or trainer or family member because it's like relying on myself. I plan on following my dad's footsteps and becoming a professional wrestler, but I also want to carve my own path so I'm not just his son. My mom, she's like, if you get into the business, what are you gonna be besides Mark Henry's son? And I was like, you know, that's a good question. I gotta prove myself to people. I didn't want him to follow my footsteps. I wanted him to be him. And a lot of times when you push people to do something because you were good at it, if they're, if they're not good at it, they feel like failure. And I, I didn't want him to feel like a failure. I wanted him to have success at something and be able to do things that I did. I never made All-State in football. I never got to go to state in wrestling, amateur wrestling. He's, he's done a lot of things. I never was a lead singer in a, in, a, in a band. Like he's done a lot of stuff that I haven't done. And I think that as an adult, he'll be able to do a lot of stuff that I haven't done. Most of the time I can hear him or I tell he's here when I see a bunch of people start swarming one area because everybody wants to see him. But, um, you know, he's very quiet because he knows like he wants it to be about me and not him. Like one of my best experiences ever, somebody went up to my dad and goes, oh, hey, uh, you're Jacob Henry's father, right? And that blew my mind. I was like, man, it's usually the opposite. They go to me and they're like, are you Mark Henry's son? So it was vice versa. And that was the sickest thing in the world to me. I was like, man, I'm carving my path. Like, I feel like I have my life plan set out for me. And like, I know a lot of people are like, what are you, what are you gonna do with your life? I'm like, don't even get me started. Cause I have like a whole paragraph of what I'm gonna do. Yeah, I always tell people, I always try to look up to The Rock because The Rock is uh, one of the most influential people in the world today. And him and my dad were friends. They're buddies. They used to be roommates together. I keep forgetting that sometimes. It blows my mind. So I, he, uh, he lets me call him Uncle DJ. It's pretty funny because him and my dad, they're really close. You know, it's pretty cool. We have a photo of him in my dad's shirt flexing. It's pretty cool. And then my mom, I know somewhere, she has like a photo of me with him when I was a kid. So. Good stuff, good, good memories. You know, I know my dad, he came in as the world's strongest man. Eventually I'll probably get like a nickname, moniker. I, I don't know what it is. People call me Big Henry or Big Hen. But uh, like, I want to be the Jacob Henry. Like, the Jacob Henry. I'm Jacob Henry. Jacob Henry's story continues with our Baylor Scott and White Health game diagnosis. Jacob recently made an announcement that he will be taking his all-world talents to Vandergriff High School for his senior year, which is also in the Austin area. 
and he is already hard at work with the Vipers for spring ball. Henry also announced that he will be playing on both the offensive and defensive line this football season, hoping to gain even more attention from colleges. From football to wrestling to powerlifting and even singing, the senior can do it all and is looking to have a very successful senior year at Vandegrift.